already this is an article from mix mag this is from why are superstar djs so keen to reconnect with the underground because that's all that's going to be left unfortunately and this is an interesting one to end on because this is a real good summation on the stuff i spoke about earlier about there being a need for people to return to the kind of you know the base level of raving and connecting with people can i think that my estimation is that once everything reopens the first things that we're going to see are illegal raves illegal fucking fresh raves warehouse raves those are the first things that are going to spring up because the licensed place the places that are just legit they don't they don't want to be liable for anybody potentially getting sick or ill at their establishment so they're going to wait until the ban is lifted for venues that are above you know their capacity limit you know if you're next to a while you can't reopen because every room you have is more than 100 people but if you're a warehouse person and you do those mad undercover underground raves you can do whatever you want but those events are at their core what real raving and what real club culture is about right um it's less about who's playing it's less about who's going to be there and more so just about enjoying that life culture connecting with people on the dance floor sharing the love for music and all that other extra stuff that you might do on the side and unfortunately the one people that are going to be able to uh, play on those platforms fortunately or unfortunately depending on what side of the fence you sit on are going to be people who are actually plugged into the scene who are part of that community who are friends who are, you know grew up in the same whatever and less so the you know person that fills a thousand uh capacity venue or whatever maybe they're not going to want to take that hit to come down to play at that level but they also want to be um looked at as that they can do it because number one what we do quite well i think as a scene is that we protect the underground quite well i think it could be better but for the most part people are quite good at sniffing out you know the people that are in it for a quick buck the people who are just you know dead the people that have been pushed by a marketing company or pushed by a label and usually the good thing is that for the most part you can sustain you can maintain you can provide for yourself being an underground act it's a bit more difficult it requires a lot more work it's a lot more hustle whatever it may be right you there's more fluctuations maybe your salary but you can sustain yourself being an independent producer dj whatever it may be event organizer more so than just doing all the big events and i think this article touches upon it so it's from mix mag it says the following um why superstar djs um so keen to reconnect with the underground producers turn pop stars have made their millions and now they want to trade the big stage for basements so here it says imagine this um imagine it you're the top of the 40 j rich list only one million per gig at vegas residency you've had a decade-long string of global hits your bronze body advertises Armani underwear and it's highly likely that your ex says swift wrote a song about you celebrity recording sessions at your la mansion have replaced uh, stacking supermarket shelves at, uh, at dumb fires yes you are calvin harris recently you released a two-track ep as love regenerator which is one of the gayest names in the world uh, with an underground sound that and um applaud it from the likes of scream and ended up on mix mag's big tunes but why bother why did fellow platinum pop star david Guetta invent a new underground alias dead mouse uh, make techno for richie horton's label why are artists who've conquered the mainstream so determined to retain their links or connect with underground credibility because they know because that's the thing right you're obviously going to get that's why I, f- I respect someone like a dixon because i think for the most part he was able to play the Ibiza game on his terms, of course, right? Do it his way, whilst also promoting his own label, whilst also pushing his own aesthetic and his way of programming. But he was able to take that big money, which you're obviously going to get mostly during the summer months, festival season, Ibiza, you know, residencies and shit, and then parlay that into his, you know, lost in the moment kind of, you know, out of this world experiential events and into your merch all that sort of stuff and keep that underground bit still ticking over i think that problem comes when you're the artist and you suddenly get one big track and you just go to the other side because what ends up happening with people realize is that usually you stop being the flavor of the month that's the problem with that kind of industry it's very flat very flash in the pan i'm sure people like david Guetta are probably suffering from it right he's probably had a loads of fans coming in and out cycling in and out of loving him and thinking he's overrated and thinking of you know martin garrix with the next one and then he's going to go for the same thing too so because of that they have to hope that they make enough money in the first jump or they just keep banging out the sets the bookings until it stops so that once it does stop you don't need to go out and play anymore because you've essentially got 20 million in the bank but some of those guys who are at their core still music fans they're still fans of dance music they're still you know ardent djs they still you know maybe look at festival streams and shit 
that give a shit about the community who just want to sell out for the sake of it they're the ones that are kind of longing to go out because they know once shit goes bad like it is now and when shit reopens and people are a bit scrappy they want to be part of the scrappy crew they don't want to still be at home doing live streams because imagine that happens imagine all the illegal raves that start going on and they're booking all your favorite people who are respected in the underground scene but then the guys that are not the guys and girls who aren't respected are still at home live streaming to an audience of five people because everyone's at this warehouse party somewhere that's not the flick everyone wants so it continues here Harris says he wanted to rediscover the way I originally began producing music 22 years ago before I ever thought about how it might be perceived for outside forces what he describes as just pure fun and experimentation might seem to more cynically minded like a calculated jump on the current bandwagon of course for Eamon uh, breakback bangers and um, 90s trance updates but the man's beheading the recent rave revival paul wolford aka special request uh, responded on twitter with go on son and confirmed the pair have been having a letter um which again i don't have a problem with people that have gone pop going back to the underground it's perfectly fine it's just funny and it's also needs to be cautious that they don't take away the opportunities from people who are putting in the work who've kind of stayed the course who've you know it took a hit financially from it by just not playing big sets or big st stages places wherever they may be and they've just essentially because that's a problem once you're underground you have to probably play more to earn the same amount of money people are getting paid for doing one or two events and again it's just what you want to do with your career in it like when you get into it what do you want to be who do you kind of model yourself in i think it maybe gets difficult when you've kind of been doing it for a long time you don't see anything coming up from it and then suddenly you know you start getting booked by these big clubs everywhere that are horrendous but they're willing to pay you it's the and again i think you know there's a lot of uh wanting of approval when you do these kind of gigs right and you who are dj and stuff so when somebody gives you some sort of love and does appreciate you because you know they want you to come play at their place and they willing to fly you out it can be tempting not to say no but i think a lot of people need to really look at it as a long game because the what you don't want is for both sides of your fan bases to kind of push away from you imagine the underground people saying nah we don't want you because we think you're fake and because you're engineered this thing and also you don't want your fans have doubt on you the fans have kind of jumped aboard because you're pop thinking that you've lost your way because you've gone back underground and you end up with nobody so it continues here um, others were less kind Andrew Lovefinger's hog <laughs> commenting the dude, has, the dude was actually there for the first wave and came up on this shit he just chose to go commercial which is true garbage which I hope and agree with while Joseph K skewed the tracks are exactly what you'd expect as an EDM trying to make something proper would sound like cold and that's a problem too isn't it? he can't you can't be Calvin Harris trying to make um, dance music when you just hold up in your home watching streams online or you know whatever maybe you have to be part of the community that like, yeah, you I'd imagine it's what it's, it's probably the same sort of feeling that exists in a comedy world with Eddie Murphy when it was announced Eddie Murphy was gonna have his comedy special on Netflix a lot of the comedians were nervous about how they were going to approach him at the comedy club because the understanding amongst them was that the only way for him to get back to where he was before or any or closer level was for him to go back on the road and start doing gigs and clubs he, he there was no way he could just be telling jokes to a mirror and then get into a stage and then try and perform in front of an audience it's not going to work um so that was the trepidation behind it, isn't it would somebody that big or somebody that famous want to go to just clubs and do it and the good people do right um seinfeld does it right when he's one of the biggest acts out, out there and kevin hart does it he'll go on the road and just start performing in random club and just pop up with that and, and announcing so he can practice his craft so i guess if those guys have to do that in order to perform a special that's going to be reviewed by you know wide majority of people for somebody like a Kevin Harris just to sit at home and think about what he thinks dance music people would want nowadays or to him to tap into the rave thing and the trance thing and try and make a track that works out isn't necessarily great and again I have to be honest that EP that he put out under his new Love, Love Renegade whatever that fucking dumb name is was fucking terrible I dashed that in the bin straight away I thought it was pretty shit um more so because it was his name attached to it it got the more of a shit treatment in terms of my listening but I would have been pleasantly surprised and happy if it was good but it wasn't and it continues a long way back for producers who outgrew the original scene or it's a long way back for producers who outgrew the original scene or it dropped in favor of chasing pop records just behind Harris on the highest paid DJ list was David Guetta who has become synonymous with platinum selling global hits and the type of set memorable described 
I remember you described in these pages as cheesier than the Frenchman socks. <laughs> Jesus Christ, yeah. He recently did something in Miami actually too. It was similar, but anyway, it continues. Yeah, his origins was playing hip hop in Acid House alongside likes of Long Garnier, yeah, Bloody Hell, in gay clubs and warehouse parties in Paris. Look how much his dead careers have diverged. That's a thing as well. I always wonder, like a Carl Cox and a Sven Bar. I wonder what Carl Cox thinks like when he sits down about his career. Obviously, his banking account is fine. He doesn't give a shit, but how their careers have diverged right from playing a love parade in berlin in 99 right with you know millions of people right around you know free love you know at the height of that kind of berlin scene and then is like still gonna be you know, he's gone mainstream he's a big act don't get me wrong but he can still tear up a bergheim right people still want to go see him play in some dungeon warehouse somewhere in the middle of stuttgart but can carl cox really say people give a shit about him in the underground scene probably not does he give a shit? I don't know. Same with Long Gagne and fucking David Guetta. Imagine being Long Gagne. You can make a score for a movie. You can hop no with celebrities at Cannes Film Festival. You can go and play back to back with Seth Tr- with um Calvin. What you know, Seth Trucks also then. Oh, he's ends up here. But you can play back to back with Richie Horton, but you know David Guetta can't, and he's he's resigned to having to play his outdoor DJ sets for residents in Miami somewhere. Uh, the, the, the continues here. The, the parties in 2018. Um, the, the, in 2018, Getter confirmed that he was behind the fourth of our workers, Jack B. Alias. I wanted to make a music just for fun with absolutely no commercial recurs, but approach to it. Should, this guy, man. I'm doing it for love of music. Oh, great. Thank you. So, everything else you provided was just not for love. It's just the fucking ear rape us. He continues. Um, when Dead Mouse swapped his mask for a test pilot, Monique here. Uh, releasing some creditable techno on plus he plus eight sorry he said i've always aspired to be a little more underground i like techno really dubby old stuff and i like it Ugh. speaking to a new industry veterans it's clear that these aren't isolated cases because most DJs in the starting underground or at least are inspired by underground scenes the most satisfactory kudos come from playing in that environment one publisher told us DJs who become that big and cross over will miss it that's why they reinvent themselves with an alias they want to be connected I know more EDM DJs who are just no huge household names but seriously want to be Seth Chuckster. What other DJ could think about them is really important, which is how it should be, right? I think a statement of comedy, that there should be more of an understanding that you should, and again, just be true to yourself. I think a lot of those people, once they do cross over, you, I think as a fan, you probably have to know that, you know, your favorite actors will sell out, which is hard to deal with, but come on, man, like, you know, it's, it's you got into especially the love that you got into in the beginning there has to be some sense that you, you want to carry that forward you want to inspire the next generation to do the same thing right you want to do that i'd imagine so so why would you risk that just to kind of cross over and make a few bob and then again that money is empty isn't it like imagine the love and the appreciation that you get from attending a really well respected festival somewhere or club night and then your favorite artist that you looked up to when you were coming up also performing with you there's a weird kinship that you probably don't necessarily get playing a mega stage somewhere where there's no one playing in front of you there's a million fucking there's 17 cdjs in front of you like fucking tomorrowland or something right um you have fans who just jump up and down have no idea who you are they're just there to go and see the main person who's going to play later on and close the fucking thing there has to be a balance i would say i'd say yes go get your money right like again like a dixon did go and get your money to find your label to be able to pay your artists to be able to make some more merch to put on your own parties but don't forget about playing you know fucking robert johnson you know every other sunday they have free because you're passing through that might that that is the most important thing as opposed to just comp- because that's the problem they have they're just completely cutting themselves off and going to collaborate with all the glitzy people in hollywood you should do that and also go to the warehouse party that's in your hometown right and just offer to play for free just for the love and imagine what that will do imagine when you're coming up you're Kevin harris and you're still playing these dusty raves somewhere and people have videos of you playing their fucking college dorm room you just throw up a tweet hey i mean yeah i got some cd i've got some cd shows does anyone want to play does anyone want me to play in a fucking fret party or something imagine how far that would go in terms of solidifying his connection with the quote-unquote underground but instead they just cut ties and bank everything and then once they want to come back they want their fans to give a shit like come on but anyway the article's long i'll put in the show notes you guys to check out it's a really cool article here written by a guy called uh peter walker some mixed mags called why super sub djs are so keen to connect with the underground 